investment. It's a closed-loop project as opposed to an open-loop project. A closed-loop project reuses the water that is, that is initially used to spill. 1,000 megawatts of generating and pumping capacity. It has allows for eight hours of full output for storage, which is equivalent to 8,000 megawatt hours per day, which is approximately one-eighth of Nevada's peak power demand. That's when it's the hottest and when all the lights are on. Rapid dispatchable response generation. You can go from zero to full power dispatch within 90 seconds. So if you have a wind farm that trips off or a solar plant that trips off, this project can be brought online within 90 seconds to make up the difference. That's a, important for frequency response, frequency control for the entire grid. So there is a, a substantial reduction in the potential for brownouts to occur. All the water rights have been secured under a lease agreement with the county, and there's a wide range of operational benefits, such as, both as a generator and as a load. The project operates as a generator when the water is drained from the upper reservoir to the lower reservoir, operates as a load when it's actually pumping the water from the lower reservoir to the upper reservoir, and even as a load, it provides additional benefit for the grid, and you get free grid stability, grid inertia, reactive power supply, and frequency support suspension. This is a project overview and layout. The, the, uh, the areas that you see that are in yellow are BLM lands. Those are public lands. The areas and parcels that you see designated in white are private lands. So the project is primarily on public lands with a few parcels of, of private lands that would be impacted by the Gentile land. Next. The economic benefits of the project are estimated to be uh, about 500 to 600 jobs have been created over five years. Those are mostly skilled labor jobs. We're talking between 80,000 and 120,000 a year jobs that are highly skilled labor jobs. Expected that those will be able to draw from the area mining expertise that is already in existence, and that's primarily heavy equipment, earth moving, tunneling operations, and high voltage electrical uh, installation. Long term, the operation will be uh, more than 35 direct full-time employees, with good income, and local spending. The estimated tax taxes on the project capital investment is estimated to be more than 2.5 billion. Local tax revenue is expected to be more than 12 million annually. There was a question that was asked about whether or not that was pre or post tax payments, and that's post, that is after tax payments are applied as they currently exist. There's not a, no expectation that that would necessarily be the case in the future, but as they currently exist, that's the estimate for the property tax increases. Project facilities, these are refined a uh, bit from our last presentation, as this is the information that comes directly out of the final license application that was filed. The upper reservoir and the lower reservoir have a capacity uh, for a little over 4,000 acre feet of active storage. It's a 46-acre footprint for the upper reservoir and a 62-acre footprint for the lower reservoir. Uh, the, uh, the, the comparison here for the, the amount of, of disturbed area and footprint is this is a, about 150 acres total. If you were to have a 1,000-megawatt solar plant, you would expect somewhere between 6,000 and 6,500 acres of affected area. So 150 acres for a project area of high-density energy supply is significantly different than what we'll see from large area impacts by other renewable sources. The conduits is, uh, that, that are, are going to be um, constructed, uh, there is a, uh, about a 2400 vertical, or, uh, vertical um, tunnel that will be drilled um, that will be going from the top of the mountain down to the powerhouse. There's a 7,600 tail, 7, foot tail race that will go from the powerhouse out to the lower reservoir. They'll be 20 to 20 foot, 20 to 22 foot in diameter. They'll be lined and they will be sealed. The transmission line is a Gentile line that will connect the, the uh, switch station that's immediately out of the tunnels entrances. It's a 25 mile line that will be on each rail structures. It's a 345 kV single circuit Gentile line. And it's located immediately adjacent to the existing NV Energy 345 kV circuit line. That's where it's proposed, that's where it's planned. And that's been the result of some significant transmission line enhancements that we've done in terms of revising and working to try and minimize the amount of impact. 
The underground powerhouse, to put it in perspective, is about the size of a football field, about nine stories high. So you can imagine the, the size of the structure of the inside. That will house inside the powerhouse uh, the three pump turbine generators with the pipe uh, capacity output of 1,000 megawatts. There will also be a, a transformer uh, housing that will be inside there at a substation location, inside the, inside the uh, mountain. <coughs> Last time we were here, we showed a video, and this is a still shot from the video to give perspective of what we're talking about here. Uh, we have, uh, we've gone out of our way to make sure that the lower reservoir is going to be outside of the, of the, of the uh, non-exclusive right-of-way for the Nevada Northern Railway. It will not be impacting the Nevada Northern Railway, uh, any of the, 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 uh, the, the unrestricted right-of-way access. Next slide. This is a cross-section, it's also out of the video that we showed that shows what it will look like inside the mountain to give perspective on how much of the, of the facility works are inside and how much are outside. The upper and lower reservoir will be visible in the switchyard outside and the tunnel openings will be visible and of course the gen line itself. In the last six months, we have uh, filed the, 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 what's called the final licensing application um, with, the, with the FERC. Um, I've had it expressed to me by uh, uh, Kevin Baker, who's our, our Assistant General Counsel, who has been here with me before, uh, that, the, that what we need to make sure we understand, what we need to understand is, is that all, all the filing, the final license application as it brings us to the starting point. We've done the work to us, to the starting point. Now the, now the work that we have turned over to the court will be initiated. We've, and we've completed additional engineering studies, We've completed environmental resource studies, cultural assessments, interconnection transmission refinements, refinements that I was referring to. And I want to elaborate on that for just a second. In the Steptoe Valley, we were able to reduce this, the right-of-way width of the transmission line from 240 feet to 160 feet wide. That, restrict, that reduces the amount of impact to, uh, uh, to nearby landowners. It also it allows us for a more narrow uh, pathway uh, just north of the NV Energy uh, currently existing line. We also set it up so that the right of way, the proposed right of way, is immediately adjacent to the NV Energy right of way. So there's no gap in between, so there's no wastage of space. Uh, we also have realigned it so that the structures that we have proposed are, are, have been responsive to some of the feedback that we've been getting from landowners so that it doesn't so that it'll span across their lands, so that it will not be in their fields, and those kinds of things, so that it will actually, the structural locations that are proposed are responsive to the, the feedback that we've been, we've been receiving. We completed the phase one geotechnical studies that were necessary, that the, uh, the borehole one was bored, was drilled in the, in the fall, and, uh, and we've gotten some pretty good information off of that, and I think that information is actually included in a geotechnical study report that's a part of the, of the final license application. And we also have been doing some significant and extensive continued consultation work to address concerns with the National Park Service. Go ahead. Speaking of which, the uh, National Park Service concerns that were, that were brought forward, they, the National Park Service filed a study dispute in May of 2022. Uh, as a result, of that, specifically to the visual and aesthetic study, the recreation study, and the socioeconomic study. As a result of that, we had an in-person meeting here at Ely in August of 2022. The mayor attended that meeting. Uh, thought it was well attended. We had some good, uh, good results of that. As a result of that, we finalized the plan to supplement the visual and aesthetic study report. We finalized that information just in, in January of this year. We were not able to reach a, com a complete consensus on the scope of the survey for the supplement to the recreation study report. The results of that, of that supplemental study report, the survey will be done, will actually be included in and in, in form the supplemental social economic study report that will be completed after that. Go ahead. By way of uh, perspective here to give people a little bit of a, an idea of what this might look like from the closest point. This is a perspective from the rail looking over the lower reservoir. And uh, this is the, the, the view that it's a photo simulation view of what that would look like from the rail perspective if the rail, were, the rail cars were to stop immediately at that point. Go ahead. 
The, uh, what was uh, discussed and what was resolved, what we finalized on was, and it was additional, what's called key alteration points for additional, additional panoramic photo simulations to be conducted. The original uh, uh, visual and aesthetics report included 10 original KOPs, the key observation points. In the vicinity of the project facilities, that included these three that are noted in blue, key observation points and some photo simulation pictures that were included in that report from those three locations. We've agreed in the consultation with the National Park Service to supplement that with seven additional key observation points with six panoramic photo simulations at five additional at uh, five KOPs and two additional single shot photo simulations over the two KOPs. Now the reason for why we're doing these additional photo simulations is so that they can inform the survey that we conduct. As a part of the survey, the photo simulation will be provided to the writers that will allow to the, to the customers of the railroad to allow them to, to, to uh, uh, provide opinion about the, the photo simulation and the, the, the the visual simulation that they would see as a part of that. Go ahead. The part that we have not been able to completely provide a consensus on and we have provided to the, to the to FERC is the survey scope and survey duration. We will be, we have proposed and we will be attempting to conduct the survey uh, between mid-May and mid-September, which is when the, uh, the rail uh, excursion rides on the, uh, the, the High Line occur. Uh, we're, in, we're proposing to do that once a week uh, for four months, excuse me, once a month for four months. There'll be 10, the original study scope included 10 train rides, 100 surveys in six weeks, 100 surveys. What we have proposed and what we plan to do is those 16 survey days and that the survey scope will be broadened to 400 to 500 surveys. We'll cover over 18 weeks from mid-May to mid-September. Go ahead. Let's talk for a moment about the FERC licensing and the FERC licensing jurisdiction. The reason why this project falls under the FERC licensing authority is because the Federal Power Act uh, has certain criteria for a, a, uh, a hydro project uh, to fall under fair, the FERC's jurisdiction. And these four are listed here, and the one that is that is causing us to be triggered by the, the, uh, the FERC licensing jurisdiction is that it occupies federal lands or reservations. There are no located navigable waters nearby, and that doesn't use water from a federal dam, and the other one uh, doesn't apply also. But we, because, we are, because we are proposing to do this project on federal lands, it, it uh, triggers the FERC licensing jurisdiction. Where we're at in the FERC licensing process is, uh, is there, are, there are three different uh, licensing uh, options that the FERC offers, offers. There's an integrated, a traditional, and an alternative. Very early in the FERC licensing process, you have to designate to the FERC which one you want to follow. We have designated several years ago that we are following the traditional licensing process. That traditional licensing process lays out a series of steps that are required. In stage one, there is a number of uh, steps that are required that are mostly administrative. We have to file a, a notice of intent and a pad, a scoping if needed for work. Stage two is the one that takes a majority of the time in pre-licensing activities. We have, we have to get site access, we have to go through and do environmental studies, cultural studies, technical studies, geotechnical studies, uh, and then uh, also go through and develop the project design as a feasibility study. We filed in February of last year the draft license application. We received comments back, and those comments were incorporated and responded to. There was a preliminary agency review as a part of that, and we filed the final license application on February 27th. We filed some of the parts on 20, uh, February 24th, so, so if you go into the FERC e-library, you'll be able to see that there were two parts of the, of the license application that were filed on the 24th. The remaining portions were registered on the morning of the 27th. And the tendering letter that we received from the FERC was issued that indicating that the license was filed on February 27th. So if there was any confusion about that, I want to make sure it's clear. It's February 27th, the date of the filing. The, uh, the, go back to the slide. The 
stage three process, the one that we're entering now after the final license application is filed, includes a number of different things that will take place and it will take time to do those. There's a NEPA process that will be triggered at, with the development of an EIS by the FERC that, that, will be, that will be started once the FERC decides that the application is quote unquote complete. The interagency coordination will take place as required uh, for those who, for those agencies that have been invited to be cooperating agencies. There is a scoping period that occurs in which the FERC will host public comment meetings and come as scoping meetings, and they will invite comments, public comments during that time frame. There's a licensing review and permit conditions that will be set, and there are state and local authorizations that will also be sought. And then ultimately, uh, if we if we dot all our T's across all our, if we dot all of our I's across all of our T's, then we then ultimately we may be able to see a license approval. Go ahead, next slide. This is an expansion and a, a graphical, graphical representation of what we saw in the previous slide. What you see in the middle, and the cursor shows that, is where we're at right now. But uh, we filed the final license application. Everything that, that it shows on that graph. To the right of that point still is yet to occur, and that's a part of stage three in this work. Go ahead. One of the things that's come up as a discussion is water sourcing. The water is under contract and lease agreement with the county that was signed in March of 2021 for leasing some of the, of the uh, water permits. Uh, that allows for a certain amount of water to be provided for the original fill and for a for an annual makeup for evaporation. During construction, there's going to be up to 900 acre feet per year for five years for construction purposes. That's for dust suppression and for construction activities. And the initial fill is about 4,500 about 4, acre feet. And the reason why it's different for the initial fill from what you saw for the capacity of the upper and lower reservoir is because you also have to fill those tunnels. And you have to fill the, the pump works, and you have to fill the inlet pump and the outlet pump, and all those things too. Then the annual makeup for the evaporation is estimated between 500 and 750 feet, acre feet. We did receive approval from the Nevada State Engineer's Office for a change in permitted usage and a point of diversion, working with the county, because the, the permits are under their name. We actually did work, worked with the county and worked with uh, work. On, with our consultants on putting together the, the permit applications to make this happen. And that's for the groundwater permits for the purposes of sourcing construction phase or industrial water and the reservoir fill water. Next slide. We also need to complete a hydrogeological study. And uh, we have submitted an SF-299 application to the, to the BLM. They have questions that need to be answered, and we have, are in the process of developing those answers so that we can have, that we can properly uh, identify what the what the in, address the concerns that they might have about the hydrogeologic testing. We're proposing to drill two wells that will that will provide good information about the recharge rate for the groundwater that exists. The, the, the information that you see that appears in the final license application is based upon the best available public information and from some test wells that have been done on the, the golf course, actually, that's publicly available information. And it provides good information for the transmissivity that's apparent within the, within the basin. That information would have informed um, the, the maximum and minimum transmissivity informed what the potential drawdown would be around those production wells. The timing of that study, the hydrogeologic study, is going to be based upon these three considerations. Winter seasonal limitations, we can't drill when there's four feet of snow on the ground, obviously. Uh, and the wildlife restrictions that we need to be sensitive to. And the equipment and operational availability. The, uh, it's, uh, interestingly enough, uh, drill rigs and drilling availability, drill crews, are in high demand right now across the entire Iran West. Go ahead. Looking ahead, and what we have coming up soon is the FERC review of the final license application for acceptance. Now, some of you have noticed that we included in the cover letter for the, the final license application that, that we were expedited license process for closed loop systems. There is a very narrow list of criteria that allows for an expedited license process for closed loop systems. We think we meet those criteria, but I will tell you that there are no pump storage hydro projects 
in the country that have qualified for the expedited license process. We think we may be the first, but we'll see. FERC will make that determination within 180 days. The other thing we filed for was FAST 41. FAST 41 is an interagency process that allows for coordination between agencies to ensure that the different agencies who have input and have, have, a, and have any potential um, improvements or comments on the process have an opportunity to do that by a coordinated approach. The expedited license process is an intra FERC process. So just make sure that there's a distinction between those two. Also, the NEPA process, once the FERC uh, finds that the license is acceptable, will be kicked off with an EIS development. The, uh, we also need to update the BLM right of way application, the SF 299 for the right of way application and land use permit. Uh, we're in, we're, we have been in negotiations and discussions with the, the BLM about the nature of what that update looks like. We hope to be able to file that within the next two weeks. We're working with private landowners on long term agreements. We need to uh, enter into a development services agreement with White Pine County at some point in the future. This is again looking ahead. Those will stipulate some of the concerns that may exist in local communities so that we can address those concerns within that agreement. We also will complete supplemental information work as, as we have worked out with the National Park Service. Supplemental visual and aesthetic study, supplemental recreational surveys, and supplemental social impact review that is specific to the railroad's uh, information and concerns. Lastly, and not, and not, uh, and not, not to, under, under, to, to relegate this to the bottom of the list, but because this is very important, uh, we're, we are uh, we have sent a letter to the BLM requesting that they convene a, a technical working group, a wildlife working group, that will allow for discussions on developing mitigation plan measures that will be uh, applicable to greater sage grouse and ungulates and uh, wildlife in general. That engagement with the technical working group will be, will be an ongoing process until we are actually able to finalize what that mitigation plan looks like. It needs to result in net habitat enhancement for those, those specific species. So that there is opportunity for us to be able to work with the BLM, NDOW, and other interested parties, and it will include many agencies, and that the BLM has requested that the county be included as a part of that, other, and other community leaders be included as a part of that, that will allow us to put in place mitigation measures that will enhance and improve the, the, the habitat for those select species. Go ahead. That is the uh, conclusion of my presentation today. Mayor, I appreciate the time. Any questions from the council? I've got. <coughs> Mayor, thanks for all the information and all the work you're doing. Uh, this is a big what if. Your boreholes don't work. I mean, you, you, you can't get to the top of the mountain. We know that. There's about five feet of snow up there. When you've done the side hill bore, you didn't even reach the depth you needed there. And what I was told that geologically it's sort of crumbly type stuff. So all this stuff you're doing ahead, I understand trying to work the process, but what if your borehole cannot happen? Going down to 200 or 2,000 feet, whatever it is. But that, that's the question. Your borehole don't work. The project to me is lost. Uh, okay, the private property owners, if they object. Some of the things you're gonna have to cross on their property what's going to happen there, and the railroad, you, know, you still haven't got all the uh, T's, nines, and dotted and crossed on there yet. I don't, I don't know, again, you're putting a lot of money out there, doing a lot of stuff, which is a lot of unknowns, in, in my opinion, on this right here. You know, and like I said, in, in the public comment, in a matter of three months, you changed from no roads in Duck Creek down to a paved highway for emergency services. That road's going to be steep. Our fire chief will have one heck of a time getting up there in the wintertime. I mean, I don't know if you have you been to Duck Did you go to Duck Creek this last week? Did you been there to look at the snow? I, in fact, this is my first trip out in, well, in two weeks, but primarily because of the weather. We've been restricted. Okay, so anyway, it's a mess up there. You know, in, in your letter that FERC sent to you, you said you're going to have a 1,000 or 1, 5, not, 1, 5, cubic yard spoil disposal site. Where's that going to be at? Is that on private property, BLM property? And what's the definition of disposal? To me, it sounds like junk. 
So the, the, the spoils you're speaking about are the, the, the tailings and vines come out of the tunneling. There is, a, we, we sent out an Exhibit G map that was sent to all of the affected landowners and to uh, grazing permit holders, and it appears in the final license application. Uh, the spoils pile location is immediately west of the lower reservoir, and it's designed to be contoured to follow the natural contour up to the side slope of the of the, of the lower reservoir. But you can take a look at that map in Exhibit G and you can see exactly where that spoils uh, location is, look, is, is at. Uh, with regard to the other questions, obviously there's, as, we, as I mentioned, there's still additional information that will be derived as part of additional and ongoing work that will be taking place. There is still a final design that will be completed that will be a result of additional information that will be derived. The, the design itself is um, is a, is a uh, feasibility study report that's included as a, a supporting design report that's in the final license application. A lot of what you're mentioning is, is based upon a lot of the experts that we have who are able to determine, based on the information that we do have, the adequacy of the, of the, of the information that we provided. That final determination will be made by the FERC as well as that. Okay, you know, because you talk about the paved road, that's if the project's going to be a go. To get equipment up to that drill site on top of the mountain, you know, first they had pictures going up the face of Peacock, which was crazy. That's a side-by-side -side access. Then there was talk about helicopter and stuff in. Duck Creek is going to be ruined. I'm telling you that right now. 51 years living here, what you guys are going to do is going to ruin it. That's enough on that. So I want that, when you said Fast 41, Fixing America's surface transportation. Now, how does that fall in, into this thing? Fixing America's surface transportation. Is that just one of the steps you said? Oh, they're a, they're a subcommission to give feedback to FERC. I mean, what does the Surface Transportation Act have to do with pump storage? I, I really can't speak to that. I know that, that we qualify for to, to be able to file for that. And the letter that we received from the FERC a week and a half ago confirmed that in the tendering letter that we received. They found that the application was acceptable and they put us into the FAST 41. You can actually go to the, uh, the dashboard for the FAST 41 to find uh, our this project listed and our summer project in Wyoming listed. To me, that's, in my opinion, which I have an opinion, <laughs> I don't like this project. FAST 41, you got a smart attorney found it. So hey, here's a way to get the ball rolling. I don't know what surface transportation has to do with anything on this right here. And right there in, in the one page, the application is not ready for environmental analysis at this time. So once again, you guys are putting all this money out. Environmental studies haven't even been done. You know, I, 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 that's your business how much money you want to spend. But we got to get, we as the council and this community have got to have more public hearings. We've had one at the convention center. The, the city council commission, they don't really count as a public hearing. Just because we have it on here as a public hearing, it, I mean, you got to fill the convention center. You know, and the sad thing about this, if this goes through, you guys build it, you sell it to somebody else, your problems are done. The, the poor people that take this thing over, they're going to have their hands full with people that see what's happened to the director. They have tried to put a, a paved road over Success Summit for 51 years. It's never happened. Now you want to take right through some prime hunting grounds? Up on top of a mountain with an upper reservoir is going to be three times bigger than Cape Lake when it's full. People don't have no vision. You know, this nice little drawing you got, that's my comments on this here. Thank you for your time and lip service. Okay, as far as your, um, the items you had here regarding the National Park Service and the Nevada and the Railways, part of that further study, including um, like simulated viewpoints, including things like the chain link fence, or one minute night to simulate what the light pollution might be, or things like that. Is that what they put? The, uh, the the fence that is around the lower reservoir that you're speaking about is is in the final license application. It's a ten foot chain link fence. It's a body in a photo simulation. The the the, the photo simulation.